Lord. Thank, Thank you, you Lord. Lord, we just come to you with grateful hearts. We praise you for being our Savior and our friend, Lord God. And I pray, Jesus, that you would be with us in this Bible study and help us to learn things that we need to learn, Lord yes, Jesus, Lord. and to help each other, Lord God. I love you and I praise you and I give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. We are studying in the book of Colossians. And uh, tonight we're going to begin at verse 18, Colossians 3, 18. And um, this verse says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Now, um, a lot of thoughts come to me, but I want to start with first that the verses right before this have talked about uh, examining ourselves, like mortifying, therefore, your members, and and making sure that um, our moral conduct and uh, behavior, I'm talking about our behavior, like owning up, self-examination, looking at yourself to make sure you're in the right, right way and behaving yourselves. But when we get to verse 18 on down, through the end of this uh, chapter here, even to uh, chapter 4, it's about relationships. And verse 18 begins with the wives submitting to their own husbands. And so I want to look over at Ephesians because Ephesians 5 really parallels and restates what we are reading here in Colossians 3, I, I look at verse 21, Ephesians 5, 21 says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. Now, just remember this, we're talking about relationships. And 22 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. 24, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So you have the comparison there, and you have to... Keep this in mind, if Jesus is over the church and he's the head of the body of Christ, that I'm talking about the church, the body mm -hmm. of Christ, being members of his body, and he's the head. It's the head, you know, mm -hmm. that is in control. And that example is for us women to be subject unto our husbands. You, you, uh, I think about that phrase or uh, too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Right. You know, there has Everything to be. Everything that's double-headed is a freak. That, that's right. Yes, yes, there has to be one head and everything else falls yes. in order. And I was thinking about this. I thought a lot about this. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, from one week to the next, I have a lot of time to think. Mm -hmm. And... Um, in 1 Peter chapter 3, I'm going to read you verses 1 to 6. It says, Likewise, you wives be in subjection to your own husbands. And here's a thought here. You know, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. This is not a one-time verse of wives submitting to right. their husbands. Really I see it here in 1 Peter 3. Mm -hmm. I see it in Colossians 3. And I see it in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. So it says uh, here in, in 1 Peter 3, it says, Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be one by the conversation of the wives. This particular verse is talking about wives that are uh, married to a husband that's not saved. Right. Now listen here. 
to next verse two says, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, three, whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair or in the wearing of gold or of putting on apparel. It's not the outs outward appearance that we're supposed to be focused on, mm -hmm. but verse four, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Now, do you hear that? That when the Lord is looking at us, he's looking for a meek and quiet spirit. So in my mind, we should be striving for that meekness mm -hmm. and quietness. And verse 5 says, For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. And verse 6 is an example of Sarah and Abraham. Verse 6 says, Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are as long as you do, do well and not, are not afraid in, with any amazement. So that verse 6 tells us that Sarah called Abraham Lord. Now, I would think of that in terms of like as to a servant to a master, right. uh, being in subjection to him or reverencing him. It would be like a situation where an employee would tell somebody, call him boss. Yes, no, or yes ma'am, no, yes. or no mm -hmm. sir, Right. that kind of thing. Uh, and uh, that's hard on some, it's hard as a human being to submit when you feel, sometimes you get to feel smarter than they are, you know. And that's one thing to say man always wants is respect. Right. And I'm glad you said that because uh, I'm confessing I've never, George is my husband and I have never called him Lord, right. but I do respect him. Yes. I totally respect him because mm -hmm. in my eyes. He is your head. Yes. That's right. Especially spiritually. I view him as a man of God. Yes. And, and he deserves that respect. Mm -hmm. And I need, I don't ever want to forget flawless. that. Oh, Nobody's no. Nobody's flawless. That's and right. And make mistakes. But if you'll remember to serve him as unto the Lord, it makes things work good. It sure it's does. Just... It sure does. It, well, um, it works good. Yeah. It works good. And so... Along that lines, as I was thinking this week, I was thinking about advice. Uh, you know, I am not a youngster anymore. So if I was giving advice to someone, a young, unmarried woman looking for a husband, I would want to give her some advice. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe you would too. Yeah. In that... Um, the first thing I would look at, and, and truly, you know, I looked at George and thought, here's a man of God. Right. He's a man, in my eyes, a man after God's own heart. Yes. Okay? So I knew that that was a good thing. Right. That would, that's a big plus on his Amen. side. It when is. I was, you know. Um, number one, make sure you're of the same faith in God. And so that reminded me of 2 Corinthians in chapter 6 and verse 14. It says in that one verse, 2 Corinthians 6, 14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness. Now, having a like faith is very precious. Yes. You, you will 
save yourself a lot of heartache if you will look for a man that is godly yes. and has a strong desire mm -hmm. to be obedient to the word of God and put God first. Yes. Likewise with young men they are looking, you know, yes. to search for a Proverbs 31 woman. <laughs> Coming soon. That's in my notes too. I just wanted to really focus on the women, right. how, how important it is. Yes. It's like I heard one lady say, she said she wanted a man that loved God more than he, more than he loved her. Wow, and that's because, a good thought. Yeah, yes. because you know if they do, they're gonna in turn love you. Yes. As unto the Lord, you know. Right, that is true, yeah. that is very true. The second thing is that you know, sometimes people just look at the outward appearance. Mm -hmm. y you know, it's just like when Samuel was sent down to Jesse's house to uh, find uh, a king to yeah, anoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was looking for, for the best looking, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. the Lord says, no, no, I look at what's on the inside, right. not what's on the outside. <laughs> Actually, God picked out exactly the opposite, or... You know, because he made himself available for him. That's right. Paul yes. Saul was tall and handsome, I guess. And said David was kind of short and ruddy. I mean, I guess. Well, I he was just red. a kid. Yeah. He was just a, a child, basically. Yeah. He was the youngest of the sons. Right. And and really, Jesse didn't even think it was worth calling, calling him in nothing. from right. watching sheep. So, um, uh, what does uh, the second thing? First thing, number one, look for a man of God, okay? When you're making your choices, mm -hmm. don't be hasty, look, look. And then second, what are her, what are his behaviors and moral conduct? And right. think about, because those are the things you're gonna have to live with. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself, does he have any habits that are offensive to you? Like um, addictions, mm -hmm. whether they're, uh, substance abuse of some kind uh, and I'm, I'm thinking what well, if you're offended now and you have to live with it mm -hmm. just think about that for a second is he a fornicator is has he been sleeping around with a lot of other women don't think that that's gonna stop just right. because he married you right. because that's I, I'm telling you that's not how it's gonna I want to say warning, warning, right. warning. True. You're going to have a great, uh, uh, is he a gambler? That's another thought. How is, is he responsible with his finances? Mm -hmm. uh, does he cheat other people in his business uh, transactions? I mean, you know, there's a lot to be thinking about with these mm -hmm. things. And I realize they're hard questions that you, as a young woman, have to look at when right. you're thinking about marriage. Um, because uh, I think I have known women that thought, well, after we're married, he's going to change. Yeah. And you are disillusioned if you think that that's going to happen. It's a good chance that you're going mm -hmm. to have to live with all of the habits that he has now do please yeah. don't be disillusioned in thinking you're gonna he's gonna be a changed man after you right. get a hold of him right. because um you're gonna have to submit yourself to this man right yes. okay a anything else i left out when it comes to uh, l looking for a husband and you're in wires. okay Please. yes angers angry oh whoa yes yeah. I, I'm guilty in the past I've been really mm -hmm. angry and it was usually over some bad behaviors mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying right. and um, I you know now that's if you're looking if you're already made your choice and you're already in a situation that's where it was saying that you're supposed to live me. An example for him, and right, there's very big possibility God's going to bring him in. Right, you can win him over, you know, 
but I wouldn't look for somebody if I was not married and I was I wouldn't look for somebody that didn't love God <laughs> if I if I that was my belief you know right because you're just you set yourself up for a lot oh, of yeah. heartaches, heartaches heartaches trials and a lot of enduring yes enduring uh, it just, and he, I think, I don't remember anybody sitting me down years, years and years ago saying, okay, when you're looking, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember. And, and I don't know, see, you know, that's a p part of being a youth is that sometimes you're hard headed. Yes. I, I, was. I probably would go, have gone ahead even if mm -hmm. somebody said, you are making a big mistake. Right. I would be. I would have been. A, I would have been angry over that. Right. <laughs> I'm just. Choice. I'm just being honest. Right. Okay. Right. But I do think that as parents, you 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 should be able to lead your children in mm -hmm. in these thoughts as to, well. Right. Make make your choices good choices. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to go on to the husband side of this okay. here because in Colossians 3, it, verse 18, it talks about wives submit yourselves unto your husbands as is it is fit in the Lord. And then verse 19 says, Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. So um, now we're going to look at the husband side of this and I like he. I think husbands, when they're looking for a wife, does the same thing of, as in examining his choice. Is she going to be a good mother? Is she going to be, does she seem like she is going to follow after him and be an, an agreeable? Mm -hmm. uh, what are the qualities that she's going to bring to marriage? Right. And um, and so that brought Proverbs thirty one, and I'm I don't know I can't assume that everybody is familiar with Proverbs thirty one, but mm -hmm. I'm going to go over there to that. Uh, it, Proverbs thirty one is the last of the proverbs, and uh, at verse ten it says, "Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies." Now this is valuable. A virtuous woman mm -hmm. is valuable. Eleven. The heart, the heart of her husband does safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. Twelve. She will do good him good and not evil all the days of her life. She's a good woman. Mm -hmm. Thirteen. She seeks wool. And flax and works willingly, willing, willingly with her hands. Fourteen, she's like the merchant's ships. She brings her food from afar. It, you know, and that's, Sister Ada, I have to think about all the things that you make and that you do, all your various talents. It, it, you see, this virtuous woman, she is thinking how she's going to add to their household and right. And provide it's not just thinking that I'm gonna demand my husband give me this and that mm -hmm. but she's seeking ways to profit her family right and 14 says she's like the merchant ships that brings her food from afar 15 she rises also while it is yet night and gives meat to her household and a portion to her maidens 16 she considers a field and buys it with the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. Now that's really industrious, okay? Yeah. I can't say that I've ever done that, <laughs> but I, the thought is nice, right. and I do see these things as goals that we as women mm -hmm. should shoot for. In other words, this is our example, and we want to try to emanate or follow mm -hmm. her, her example. And 17, she girds her, her loins with strength and strengthens her arms. 18, she perceives that her merchandise is good. Her candle goes not out by night. 
at 19, she lays her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. 20, she stretches out her hand to the poor, yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. That's a good quality, is caring for the needs of the poor. And 21, she is not afraid of the snow for her, hus for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. So even in the winter time, she has provided for the time mm -hmm. of uh, that intense cold and providing for mm -hmm. the needs of her household. 22, she makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is sir, sir, silk and purple. 23, her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. 24, she makes fine linen and sells it and delivers the girdles unto the merchant. 25, strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Well, that's a big one to just focus on right there mm -hmm. is that watch what comes out of your mouth. Right. In 27, she looks well to the ways of her household and eats not the bread of idleness. 28, her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. In 29, many daughters have done virtuously but thou excellest them all. 30, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And the last verse says, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. So a husband is looking in my mind for something that fits the bill of the virtuous woman and the women typify or are trying to follow. I, we're not perfect. Right. We just view these things and consider them and try to adapt to her ways. You know, that's where it says there's a scripture in the Bible that said it's good to serve the Lord in your youth. And I look back and I think of all the mistakes and stuff, like not eating the bread of idleness. I did too much sloughing on it in my house, you know. I didn't I played a lot. And I I don't think I was the virtuous I wasn't a cheater on my husband. I never do that. And I respected my husband. But I can sure see some things that would have made my home a lot smoother and run a lot cleaner if if I'd have been in the word and trying to really learn what this word was saying to me and follow them. Right. It can it can bring shalom peace to your house. Amen. And some women, you've heard it said, well, I don't care how much money he takes in the door, she just makes sure it goes, throws it out the back door, you know, because she's been wasteful and not frugal and, you know, there's just so many things. This Proverbs woman, 31 woman was not that way. That's right. She was considerate and using her money wisely. I could see she was even turning a profit, you know. Frugal. Yes. 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 And, and, and these days when wasteful and laziness yes. is two things that I think people must fight. <laughs> right. They're bad habits. That problem, That's right. Those that do sure need a lot of prayer. Amen. Boy, that is true. Yeah. What would you... Can you say that last part again? I just <laughs> I said wasteful and laziness. They're kin to one another, you know, really. Right. And it it's a weight on you. It's an added weight. If you're um, you can make money, yes. You can make a dollar out of a dime, really, by just being frugal. Right. And not I don't know, it's just a lot of things. I think people identify what I'm saying. I, just I, I know they wish probably I'd have, can. I've done right. better, that's all I'm saying. Uh, 
one Here's last. Here's our goal. Let's yes. try to do it. <laughs> yes. One last thing before we end this part one is that I heard T.F. Tenney, he's a preacher, and I heard him say it more than once. He said, husband and wives don't fall out of love. They fall out of forgiveness. Okay, now there is a old proverb: "The straw that broke the camel's back." Mm -hmm. It's not that that last straw is so heavy, but there is so much accumulation that builds up until forgiveness is gone. Mm -hmm. Now that can be on both parts, right. and you know it could be. Uh, a husband that has issues with his wife or a wife that has issues with their husband. I don't know what the statistics are now about, it used to be one in two marriages dissolved in divorce. And that that's a terrible thing. And also, I've seen a lot of unforgiveness between people that have divorced. Right. And remember this, unforgiveness in your heart results in the unforgivable sin. So you don't mm -hmm. want to hold grudges or any, and really, we're not permitted just to divorce. Right. That's not the solution. Preacher, sitting on a fence, trying to make a dollar out of these fences. Preacher, sitting on a fence. I'm not real sure about that. Yeah, I'm that, sure. Uh, talking about being free to leave. Preacher, preacher, sitting on a fence, trying to make a dollar out of these fences. Well, and then there's. I, I do yeah. have Hebrews 12, but that's in our second part that... Um, you talking about when one says marriage is honorable? Hebrews 13? It says marriage is honorable and all and the bed undefiled. Yes. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Yes. yes. That too. Okay, so... That's uh, a good one, George. It, it is. It, but the only um, permissible divorce would be in between uh, if your hu husband or wife has been unfaithful, right. committed adultery, uh, that then you are permitted to divorce. Right. But um, uh, we're s certainly not promoting that. I, I just want you to realize that we should be careful when we make our choices. Right. And just remember that these are things that we do face in life. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to end here, this part one, and then we'll pick up uh, on the second half, part two. And you can find it on Ada Believer by the icon and pulling up videos. It should pull up the last video first. Thank you.